We're going to look really at tour operators and the kind of finalist talk here now today. Um, I think in the first couple of speakers, obviously, they talked about the theory about why um, you should engage with your customers and so on. And also, um, interestingly, we're going to be talking about a, um, an Asian-based company, Destination Asia, as a kind of case study. So obviously, they have Chinese offices. So it's very interesting um, hearing about how to make sure that you kind of, uh, <clears throat> your sites do run well in China. But really, the talk today really is about how um, tour operators can use technology to deepen um, their relationships with B2B customers. You know, it's very different from a uh, tours and activity provider. Um, you know, being in, in place of big marketplace is great because you've got um, all the products out there with other things you can do in a particular destination. And you can um, benefit from people who want to see what's in Norway in particular fields and so on. I think for most tour operators... The last thing they want to do is be on a big marketplace with other people's products um, that would just um, homogenise the offerings that they give to people. So really what they're looking at is trying to personalise things so they can really stand out from the crowd. So one of the things um, we'll talk through a bit today is um, Destination Asia, who are a, a, a big uh, tour operator DMC in Asia. And you know one of the things that they want to do is kind of personalise their content and also kind of um, grow their business um, and grow their brands. A little bit about who we are. Um, Open Destinations, we're a tour operator technology provider. So we've got about 400 staff um, across a couple of offices around the world. You know, we've got over 10,000 users a day using our software. And, you know, we provide kind of reservation technology and, um, you know, different kind of booking engines, you know, CRM, <clears throat> kind of mobile devices, applications for um, different technology, you know, different tour operators around the world. Um, as you can see, we've been kind of featured in the kind of Sunday Times over the last few years for the kind of uh, the great success we've had, and we, we've got you know a number of clients. So we're going to talk a bit about the experience of uh, dealing with those different clients around the world. You know, from companies in Asia, you know, train companies at Orient Express, <coughs> you know, big tour operators like Road Scholar in the States, um, and uh, Peak, you know, and the big DMC groups around the world as well. So talk a bit about their experience of uh, implementing technology. Now, I think the first question really is, um, you know, why does personalization matter? And, and I think, um, you know, within a consumer environment, you know, most people recognize that um, unless you've got relevant content for people, people aren't going to kind of look, um, you know, too long at your site. I mean, you know, personally, I, I think it's great. Then when I go onto my Amazon account, it comes up and tells me the latest kind of DVDs or music I can buy or books that um, are there from authors I've read before, that I've bought before, who um, they could recommend, you know, based on the same kind of things that I might like. So, you know, I kind of enjoy the fact that when I go in there, it makes that kind of buying experience much richer for me. And, you know, I can, in some ways, I don't have to think, you know, because it knows a little bit about me and it can present the type of data that I want. And, you know, and on the consumer um, side, you know, reports like Jan, Jan Rain, you know, we're talking about 74% of online consumers get frustrated um, with websites where the content has nothing to do with what they're looking for. So, you know, there's lots of kind of examples about why, um, you know, improved customer service equals customer loyalty. You know, you're going to be able to increase revenue if you put products out there that people want to buy, <clears throat> they're more likely to buy them. I think it's going to stay to the obvious way to say that. Um, you know, in terms of accelerating purchasing decisions, if there's kind of things you can do at the end of a, a, a purchasing website, you know, there's an add-on you can buy, then people will buy it if it kind of attracts their interest and, uh, <clears throat> you know, kind of is the right price at the right time. Um, you know, it's interesting, kind of EasyJet did a, um, uh, a new um, kind of website where they introduced personalization, and they got 67 to 1 return on investment. And one of the things they found was that um, when they included um, airports that people had flown from, so if I'd flown from Manchester or London Gatwick or whatever, <clears throat> if I then sent an email shot to those people talking about the kind of offers from those airports, they got a, a massive engagement with people reading those kind of e-shots, and then they increased the conversion by 60%. So I think, you know, there's, there's obviously um, lots of um, understanding in the consumer world about why personalization matters and why, um, <clears throat> you know, it's worth kind of in investigating. And I think the key message that we've got really today is that, you know, B2B customers are expecting the same thing. I mean, we, we're all consumers <clears throat> in different ways. And, you know, whether it's a, a B2B travel agent, um, you know, kind of buying from a tour operator overseas or a tour operator buying from an inbound tour operator and so on, you know, we're all expecting that um, we've got the right content appearing on the website and it's easy enough to buy it. So I think, you know, what I'm trying to kind of explain a bit today is um, how in a tour operator environment, personalization is still key, even though the relationship is with B2B. Um, so we talk a bit about Destination Asia. 
Um, they're a you know, leading DMC. They've got 11 countries around the world where they've got offices, um, you know, including China. They've got a big um, DMC kind of inbound and outbound into China. Um, you know, they've got 29 operating offices with 700 staff. So they're kind of, uh, you know, a fairly um, a big player in the kind of Asian markets. And, um, you know, I think, um, you know, recently got kind of acquired by a, a large um, Middle Eastern airline. Um, and, and I think for them, really, what they wanted to do, the kind of key objective was to build loyalty through ease of connection, um, you know, develop that kind of sticky relationship with customers. I mean, obviously, in a, in a wholesale inbound tour operator world, you know, really what you're selling is... Um, your service, you know, you're selling obviously the fact that when a booking happens that your customers get looked after when they arrive in the destination. And if that kind of works well, then you're more likely to um, do business with them again. But, you know, with technology, it's an increasingly um, transparent world. You know, we can all see prices of hotels. We can all see prices of trips and so on that are available, um, you know, when you log into kind of B2B websites. So I think, you know, trying to build that kind of sticky relationship with the customer is, um, is obviously key. <clears throat> and, you know, a sticky relationship that enables them to come back time and time again and buy multiple services from that same DMC. Um, you know, one of the key things also is they wanted to differentiate themselves in a crowded market. Um, you know, obviously, if you look at the, uh, um, you know, the number of tour operators in China, in, in Thailand or in China or whatever, you're going to see hundreds and hundreds. So, you know, how do you differentiate yourself? How do you make sure that it's your name and your service and your brand that stands out when, um, you know, people are looking... To, um, to buy products from you. Um, you know, so the, when they did the project, they looked at you know, how they can increase the spend per customer, increase revenue um, through both online and offline relationships, um, you know, increase sales of their pan-regional itineraries where somebody goes from Thailand to Malaysia to Singapore or whatever, um, and then you know, obviously improve response time for new business when um, somebody wanted to do business with them, um, that enabling them to respond quickly with quotes, um, you know, to give information about the products, give logins to kind of websites and so on. So, you know, and that's, that's a kind of key thing with most tour operators, that, you know, they try and aim for like a 24-hour response time, you know, but obviously in today's world, you know, when we send out requests for something, we're expecting kind of response almost kind of instantaneously. So, you know, how, how do you achieve that in a B2B environment? Um, the solution we, we provided really was, you know, kind of um, we um, amalgamated all those offices together into one solution and provided a, a unified XML interface for people to go and buy their products. Um, sounds easy to do. You know, it's obviously hard. You've got different cultures. You've got the, kind of the, the challenges of getting um, product from China and allowing all those kind of, uh, um, XML queries through to kind of inventory in China to come through as well. So there's a lot of work to kind of do that, to, to merge them all together into one um, single operational unit. Um, and then, you know, obviously provide that kind of... Uh, um, you know, preferences and all the kind of uh, the details about the customer to kind of flow through to all the different operating companies. So, you know, the, the solution really, you know, gave them the kind of building blocks to kind of do that on. And the solution really was kind of broken down into a couple of different areas. I think one, one of the first customers is really knowing your customer. You know, um, sounds kind of um, obvious, but, you know, um, knowing what your customer wants, you know, what are their booking histories, you know, quotation histories, you know, what, what do they like to get for their clients, you know, preferred lodges, preferred suppliers they like to use, you know, preferred um, type of hotel, four-star, five-star, three-star, hostel, whatever it's going to be. So having that kind of data in the back end of a system, so when your customer logged in, there's no point giving them special offers um, of, you know, five-star resort hotels in Vietnam when their kind of target market is hostels and backpackers, you know, doing kind of bike tours around Thailand. So, um, you know, getting the right product to the right audience is kind of, um, is key. Um, and then, you know, obviously personalising that, you know, making it through with the, the website and then the proposals with branding and so on in there. So, so really getting that kind of personalised content um, out there. Um, on the website, you know, really, um, you know, making sure you had something that was kind of good looking and... Um, you know, it was attractive for people. Obviously, um, performance is key. Um, you know, kind of, um, it's interesting to see that statistic on, you know, all websites, you know, should be responding less than kind of four and a half seconds. I think that's a kind of uh, a key metric that, you know, if, if all websites did that, we'd all be very happy in the world, really. Um, you know, in terms of the websites, you know, flexible library of products, you know, tailoring, you know, making sure that... Um, you've got the right preferences behind it to kind of give the right products as they come through. Um, and also kind of creating the right products if you need to, um, if you recognise that most of your customers are um, 
building um, you know, multiple services into their own little package, then creating those kind of bundled packages together so they can buy things um, easily as they go through. Um, you know, so in terms of the end user experience, you know, it's obviously, um, you know, they, they can use their traveler's experience preferences, you know, to create a kind of wow experience for them, you know, personalized products for travelers um, and so on. And then, you know, obviously the, the kind of key really is that you deliver exceptional service and that the tour operator feels valuable um, and valued at the end of the day. Um, one of the kind of latest things that we've just gone live with is um, a nice mobile app that allows, um, you know, the, the consumer, I mean, you know, I think the, uh, you know, I think it was recognised, you know, when this was first kind of um, developed that, you know, kind of almost 100% of all customers now are travelling around the world. They've got their mobile device with you and you can see around the audience here, hopefully it's not my talk, but uh, lots of people looking at their phones. So um, it's obviously, um, you know, it's a key thing to get information from. So, you know, it, it, it kind of makes sense then to stick all the information they need for their trip on the mobile phone as they go around. So all the um, itineraries, the maps of where they're going to go, allowing them to um, give feedback on, um, on you know, what they thought of that kind of that tour guide delivering that trip or the restaurant they stopped for lunch at and so on. Um, all that information, you know, so collecting that kind of real-time information um, from the customer, you know, giving you the opportunity to kind of upsell as well. If the customer has got a free day being able to... Um, you know, kind of suggest itineraries that they could do or, you know, be able to book things for them for lunch or whatever it is you want to do. Um, you know, and I think the key on, with all this really is that it's, it's really reinforcing your brand. So, you know, you're, um, you know, building that kind of customer loyalty with the customer, um, but you're also kind of differentiating themselves by being able to offer something that is a, is a kind of wow moment for the customer. So I think, you know, that, that was all part and parcel of the uh, solution really to be able to do that. So in summary, um, you know, I, th I think you know, um, in terms of personalization in a B2B environment, obviously it's very different from you know, the, uh, <clears throat> the you know, understanding the kind of data that you would in the consumer environment and understanding who your audience is. But you know, obviously XML connectivity is um, the key thing. I think, if, um, you know, I think Paul's going to have earlier question about what's the kind of big things in travel um, that you know, still have to happen. I think connectivity is the key thing. You know, I think people um, nowadays, you know, we've gone from kind of writing letters to using mobile phones to Skype and, you know, different kind of mechanisms, what's up, what's happened, all the rest of it, to talk to people. Um, you know, unfortunately, technology hasn't quite got there. Um, we know how to do it. We know how to connect systems together and get information backwards and forwards. But most of the world really is um, completely unconnected. So I think, um, you know, having that connectivity between different buyers and sellers, wherever they are in the kind of um, supply chain, is, um, is key. So, you know, I think the world is all to do about connectivity at the moment. Um, the B2B website, you know, obviously, the kind of a, a tour operator B2B environment, you know, having a website that um, puts your product online, um, allows you to um, personalise the kind of content that appears to them is obviously a key thing. Um, you know, account management, I think, you know, it's not all about kind of booking. Um, you know, one of the key things that people like is the ability to make changes that don't involve money, as one of the kind of tours guys was talking about earlier, um, to see how much money they owe you on their particular statements and so on. Um, you know, to be able to talk to somebody about a particular product or an idea they've got for something they want to do. So I think it's kind of um, the communication side as well as the website, as well as uh, um, just the kind of being able to book things, which is obviously kind of key as well. Um, you know, streamline the operations, you know, obviously kind of one touch point, you know, having a, a solution that kind of um, enables you to get rid of all those people answering kind of emails and so on and focus on kind of more value added things uh, that they can do and, you know, get um, all the people working in kind of one operational environment, you know, delivering the same quality of itineraries and pricing kind of on one environment and so on is obviously a key thing in terms of customer service. Um, and, you know, I think finally, kind of on the personalization stuff, you know, just having, um, you know, a CRM that um, has all that kind of customer preferences behind it is, is obviously a key thing to uh, enabling you to kind of take advantage of uh, thinking about how personalization is going to make a difference to them. So, um, so that, that's really all I've got to say today. We've, uh, we've got another event actually on Thursday where we're going to talk about the effects of... Uh, of uh, China and the kind of eastern markets on technology in the UK as part of London Tech Week. So if anyone wants to come along, it's at the London Canal Museum. It's a bit of a free plug, hopefully. Um, but you're welcome to come along on Thursday. Okay, thank you.